Hickok 45 here, your internet shooting companion, coming to you from the beautiful hills of Middle Tennessee. Yes, Tennessee, the home of Alvin York. Let's just leave it at that since it's Memorial Day weekend, right coming right up. Maybe it's already started before I post this. I don't know. But yes, your internet shooting companion, and I am happy to be here in Tennessee. Leaves are out. Humidity is out. Summer is kind of here, it feels like, and uh, I'm in the woods talking to you, okay? So, uh, whether I'm sane or not, I'm in the woods <laughs> talking to you, and that kind of indicates I might not be sane, because here I am in the woods with just the camera and myself, and my trusty old World War II 45 ACP. You've seen it in action, uh, you know, in videos, and some other folks might have seen it in action and didn't live to tell the tale. Who knows? In 1943, 44, 45. So I am happy and proud to have it. So I thought it would be appropriate to have this one out today. I don't have any bullets in it, so I guess probably won't shoot it, okay? I just saw it there in the safe, and you know what? Let's pull it out. Uh, just, I mean, what time could be more uh, appropriate, you know? So anyway. Good to be here and good to be anywhere. Hey, when you're as old as I am, it's good to be anywhere above the grass, right? But uh, good to talk to you again. It's been over a month. Ah, time flies, you know, and I haven't yacked at you, you know. And, uh, you know, there are a few of you who actually watch these and listen to the yakking, and I just don't want to deny you, really. Uh, you know, for one thing, it's got to make you feel smarter, right? I mean, it's got to. And let me turn my phone down. And anytime I can help people and make them feel smarter, I just like to do that. Yeah. So what have we been up to? I don't know. Oh boy, pretty busy. Uh, 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 gosh, I guess since I've yacked at you, we've been to a couple of different events. Been to the NRA meeting, duh, right? Yeah, in uh, Indianapolis. And we saw a lot of you. Many of you watching this video uh, yeah, I'd say many would be probably pretty accurate. I shook hands with, right? You probably got some ugly picture of me, you know, on you. Maybe you've even got it on Facebook by now or somewhere. But yeah, yeah, we saw you and I remember you. John, you in a green shirt. I remember you. Uh, Sally, yep, in the pink blouse. I remember all y'all. Yep, met y'all and uh, met a lot of you at the NRA meeting. Yeah, that was great. That's one reason we go, you know, it's... Uh, it's a chance to, to see a lot of the funny faces that are on the other side of the computer screen, you know, <laughs> and also to browse all the nice firearms and see what's out, what's new. And, and then actually a lot of stuff is new. A lot more of it's new than, than you might think, because if you get this news flash, if I haven't seen it yet and I'm not aware of it, then it's new, right? There are people walking around the earth right now who don't know what an 1860 Henry rifle is. And so if they see one, guess what? It's a new gun to them, right? <laughs> uh, I'm so smart, I just amaze myself sometimes. These, these flashes of uh, brilliance. I, I think it's something about the, the woods, the, all the chlorophyll out here. Okay, I hope you, yeah, you can see it behind me, yeah. I'm over here at the campsite. For those of you who have seen all the FAQ videos, I think we did one or two over here at the campsite. Trim some trees over here with a shotgun. Campfire's right behind you. Nothing burning right now, although I think we're going to burn it this weekend and, uh, you know, have a little cookout over here maybe. But, yeah, what was I? Oh, yeah, NRA meeting. It was, it was great to see all y'all. Isn't it a wonderful uh, event to, to have all the gun companies right there? And many, many, many of the accessory companies too, and just browse through it. If you can get around to all the people, there's a lot of gun nuts in one place. So it's uh, it's the way it is, right? So uh, uh, it's good to see you. Uh, you know, we go every year, have for a long time, and plan to for a long time, right? Yeah. You know, of course, the NRA got some their dirty laundry aired at the NRA meeting, and uh, you've probably seen some of that. So. Hopefully, uh, get all that figured out. And uh, as I've said before, for, for one thing, pro and con, uh, on the con side, it's not good. Not good. You know, we rely on the NRA. We need a strong NRA, right? Uh, I mean, we rely on 
that I mean, the gigantic uh, firearms rights group, you know, in the lobbying world, and you know, that's what the anti-gunners fear the most, basically. But um, you know, so it's not good, you know, that kind of stuff going on internally, you know. Even though on the pro side, you know, I've worked for a lot of companies, and we all are familiar with every organization under the sun. Uh, whether it's a government organization or it's a private organization, and the, the bigger and bigger it gets, the uh, more of that you know you see, you know, and scandals come out. Sometimes they don't come out until, you know, I don't know. Someone writes a book ten years later, things you didn't even know about, you know. It's like the Eagles, you know. Man, it's just I grew up with the Eagles uh, rock group. All those wonderful songs, they harmonize so beautifully, you know. And then I saw a uh, special on. Well, it wasn't MTV, I don't know, some, what would have been on, not all that long ago. And, uh, and oh my gosh, the turmoil and the, the conflict within that group and the backbite, all the stuff that went on, my gosh, who knew? I mean, yeah. so you got it with, with all kinds of uh, groups and stuff, uh, internal stuff, but in a way it's good it's aired. It's, it's good that it, it got out and some of that's gotten out and, and whatever's true and whatever's not, and whatever's exaggerated and whatever is not. I always like to hear the uh, the other side of things from the horse's mouth when I can on anything because you can make anything look worse than it is but some of that doesn't look good and uh, so anyway that, that's got to be good you know because I think it will be addressed. So again I hope you'll join along with me and uh, make your voice heard within the organization because we need a strong NRA. It's just that simple, okay? Uh, no one out there who is also doing good work, the other gun rights organizations, are just nearly big enough. I mean, it's like a BB to a basketball in, in terms of right now to, to, to achieve the same goals, you know, right now, okay? But, I mean, no one else is feared, you know, right now. But anyway, uh, you know, you know what's going on. I know what's what well, I don't know what's going on. I know what I hear. I don't know any more than you do, but we need to make our voices heard and get that that cleaned up. So, uh, what else? NRA meeting, and you know, it's kind of like I've said too. The uh, oh man, I've been some, I've been with some companies where they were so. And in fact, I've been with a couple of different companies, great companies, household names in in the field. You know, incredibly well respected. And, but oh my gosh, the uh, personnel turnover and some of the turmoil at the top and in various places. And I mean, I got the call at the, uh, a couple of different companies, the Banana Republic of whatever it was, you know, of publishing or of education or whatever it was, you know. And by that, I don't mean the retail store, Banana Republic. I mean, that's funny because some people thought that, you know, they're not familiar with the old phrase, the Banana Republic, referring to the old, you know, the, the, uh, little countries where there's always a coup and someone else has taken over because they think they can run it better and then then you know a few years later the there's a coup that that puts them out of you know there's always this this turmoil and this turnover so when someone says that the banana republic of something that's unless they are talking about the retail outlet <laughs> so uh but i've been in some of those environments and was even a victim in one of them uh but by and large every company i've been with schools where i've taught I kind of stay below the radar and all that and uh, stay out of the drama and I've done quite well, you know, and, and you know, the, the trains run on time, everybody gets their job done. If it's in a school, the, the kids got the same education and that everything else and reputation of the school is just, just fine and intact and, but internally and all the various things that can go on with people, because you know how we humans are. We get greedy, or we uh, we get a little egotistical, or we we uh, I don't know. They you know all the things that happen with people. Think about the, the companies you, you have been with and everything. And, and I'm not really defending the NRA. I just try to put things in perspective. Uh, there are a lot of young people out there who, oh gosh, and not even really young. I don't know when. I might have been 30, 35, 40. You know, before I had been with enough different companies. And seen enough of the world and just realized how incredibly imperfect you know people are and and, and businesses and, and just everything that you thought were you know really nice for one thing just working for five different companies if you do that as you do that you begin to see when you're young you begin i wasn't even gonna talk about this here i am though. uh 
you know, you're you're kind of idealistic and optimistic. I remember your, your first job or whatever it is, and and you know, oh man, and you're excited to tell your parents or whoever about this job you got. This this great company, and here's what they do, and here's what my responsibilities are, and everything. And, and then gradually you start seeing the warts, right, <laughs> of that company. I, it happened when I was playing sports. I remember uh, when I was, and I'm just off on another time. I'm not. Uh, I'm not, as some people accuse me, you know, oh, you're just trying to defend the RA, but no, nah, I'm just kind of off on, on another uh, venture here, I guess, sidetrack. But I remember when I uh, I played college basketball and, at a couple of different schools, and uh, you couldn't play varsity as a freshman back when I played, uh, when I came through. And I went to a school in North Carolina where you could. Then I transferred later to Austin P. Many of you know I played there. And uh, I remember uh, getting into the dorm and I was excited, you know, um, and there were some guys that were playing cards and everything, other players, they were just grousing about everything, grousing about the coach and this and that, and if someone should have been playing, someone shouldn't have, and, you know, I was all, my bubble was kind of burst, I was, uh, I was still naive at the time, I guess, and I was, I was excited, ready to go. And, I, and if, if for one thing, my high school coach kind of ingrained in us all of that silly backbiting and uh, just goofy drama and all that kind of stuff. There was no, he had no patience for that. So we didn't have much of that in my high school team uh, at all, at least that I was aware of. And, but in, you know, it's a little freer and open you get to college, you know, whether you're playing the sport or not. And I, it really uh, was surprising to me and kind of shocking in a lot of ways. Of course, as usually is the case, these people grousing so much and having all the drama and the problems with the guys who didn't play much, right? That's the way that usually goes, right? The unsuccessful people are usually the ones with the biggest mouths, you know, uh, I guess. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, saw in sports, uh, you know, the, and, and then there was some of that, of course, you know, and I had, a, my gosh, my first coach, uh, there was drama involved with him when I was a freshman. You know, he recruited me in North Carolina, and then he's gone that first year. That's one reason I left and then went to Austin P. And then I had two or three different coaches there and, and turnover and that kind of stuff. And it's just, there's just going to be drama, you know, when people are involved. And as I answered somebody online uh, last week or so, uh, I am, I am again, not, not in an effort to excuse anything that's actually you know happened or gone on with the NRA or anybody else. Uh, I am selfish enough and practical enough that I I can overlook some warts if if some entity is getting the job done. You know, think about politicians. Think about the warts that we have to overlook uh, with with our presidents or our senators, you know, or con congressmen, ever anybody, right? You know, name your president, name your politician, local, national, or whatever. But, uh, yeah, you look at the alternatives, and you look at what are they getting done that I like, you know? Now, I don't think I want a serial killer or a mass murderer in the Oval Office at any time, whether it's a Democrat or Republican. I don't care what he can get accomplished. I'm not saying that. But I think you know where I'm coming from. You know, and then some people get a little irrational about it. Uh, uh, they really do. It's like, you know, whoever their party is, whoever their president is, it's, oh, my God, anything he says is gold, you know. And it is he, right, so far. It's gold. doesn't matter. Anything he does, you know. Well, I'm a little more realistic than that. I could, I could sit here and bash Clinton, Bush, Trump, Obama on lots of things, okay. But I did vote for some of those people. And I'm very pleased with some of the things some of those people got done. And then very displeased with some things they did not get done. But anyway, you don't need me to give you a lecture on human nature. I, I realize that. But I really, if you're young, maybe you do. Maybe, you know, maybe you're not. Uh, I think there should be a course. This is another uh, stump I've been on before. Soapbox. What's a soapbox? Did soap used to come in boxes? And then people would get up on that box and preach? I guess that was it on the on the street corner. Uh, so since I got off on this tangent, I think in high school, oh my God, I would love to teach it. Now I might not be the best to teach it, but I could, I could, uh, you know, maybe you need actually five or six different people to teach it, have a lot of different units. It could be a really legitimate 
a full year course for seniors that you have to take to get out of school. I don't care what school you're in, the, the best uh, college prep school or, or whatever, the worst high school in the, in the city or in the uh, country, but a, a course on life, you know, there's, there's maybe not, not even a textbook. You just bring in people. Maybe uh, one week you bring in two or three different people from various businesses and talk about uh, you know, like what it's like to work for their company and the various positions within that company and what they pay, right? And what they expect, how they interview, what they're looking for you know, in an employee, how you rise within that company. What does it require to become a manager at Wendy's or McDonald's or at Walmart, whatever it is, whatever the business is, if it's an architecture uh, you know, uh, outfit or whatever it might be, what they're looking for, what qualifications do you need, what kind of uh, education do you need beyond high school, at least, and of their employees they have working for them, what has caused the ones who have been very successful, what is it that caused them, seems to have been the reason they are succeeding and they're doing well and they're getting promotions what qualities do those people have uh, that, that makes them effective in their jobs. You know, I mean, just some, oh man, really common sense. Same with civics. Yeah, let's go back to the 1700s. You know, what happened? How'd this country get formed? Let's look at the Constitution for a week or so, okay? And talk about the people that sacrificed their, their jobs, their lives back in the day and why it's written the way it is uh, and, and how it's imperfect. Yeah. Speaking of slavery and, and other things, women couldn't vote. Yeah. I mean, you know, let's, let's talk about all of that. You know, uh, one thing I've always thought, I've, I've mentioned this to several people, I think it would be extremely, extremely useful in, in that context to have a class where, in that same class, I guess, where you, you take those jobs and out in life, whether it's truck driver, school teacher, uh, YouTube video maker, uh, I don't know, you're managing a, a McDonald's, take a lot of realistic job. You're an architect in this firm, you're a, an attorney, you're a, a young attorney, you're a, a, a young physician, general practitioner, you're a surgeon, all these positions, all of these jobs, and, and talk about how much money they generally start out at on average, okay, and what they're making five years later, 10 years later, okay, in, in dollars, real dollars, what they make, okay. And then take that, it's in a, and then and here's the thing you don't get, because when you're not working, uh, yeah, I remember my first job, you know, teaching, oh my gosh, what was it, uh, right out of college, I was, it was like, what I made, like 4,000, 4,800 or something, you know, uh, for the year, you know, but hey, that's like a lot of money, a lot of money <laughs> when you're not making anything, uh, so uh, the best thing to do, is my point here, is show what standard of living that you can expect. That's more important. The number doesn't mean anything to so somebody's in high school, college, even. Uh, okay, if you if you want you think you want to be a truck driver, you think that's cool, or you want to be in the military, you want to uh, be a, a teacher, you want to be a uh, an attorney, a physician, whatever. We know what these people make, generally speaking, on average. Show where they live what kind of car they have based on their income. Here's the kind of car that you could get. Now, this, without going in crazy debt or anything like that, living, um, up, I don't know, living fairly frugally, but, but you know, having some fun too, whatever, uh, something in the middle of the road. Here's the kind of vacation you, you generally could take and enjoy, whether it's you could go to Panama City Beach every summer, or you could go on a cruise three times a year, whatever it is. But I mean, and make it realistic, that would not be hard to do. I could do that. I could do that. I could research this a little bit here in a few minutes, what the average physician makes in Nashville, you know, general practitioner versus a surgeon, whatever it might be, and, and look at the numbers. And I could tell you, I could figure that out myself almost. You know, so, so people have put some real thought into it and some more research, some academic research and then bring that to high school seniors, maybe juniors, I don't know, maybe middle schoolers, maybe sixth graders. I don't know, you know, because you get these ideas, I want to be a fireman, you know, or I want to be a cop or whatever I want to do in life. You don't think about 
the lifestyle attached to it until they get out and they get in that job and they don't like the lifestyle attached to it. My God, this the, I was always thought I wanted to be a cop. This is, I, I love the work, but wow, people are mad at me all the time and it's really tough. And man, I can barely make my house payment and it's not a mansion, you know? And, and so they start looking for other jobs. They start, so they're not as uh, dedicated to what they're doing, whether it's being a cop or a teacher or a, an architect, whatever it might be. They thought they were going to make the big bucks, maybe being a lawyer or a, or a doctor. You know, the, the bucks associated with those are not necessarily astronomical. Some of you folks that are a, an attorney or you're a general practitioner or something, you know, chime in there. You don't, you don't get rich right away, do you? And you may never get really rich, especially in today's world, the way things are. Uh, but when, don't you think that would be cool? I mean, that would, that would have been so useful to me uh, because numbers mean nothing. And even looking at a neighbor, well, I know a neighbor down the street there, he's a, he's a doctor and man, they got that mansion and he's always got a new Mercedes or whatever. Well, I don't know, maybe they're all financed and he owes $800,000 on his cars and other junk alone. I mean, counting is more, you don't know what, what money somebody has, you know, based, I mean, to an extent you do, but it's still hard to tell because, you know, you can, if you got credit you can buy anything you want to, right? So anyway, I don't know how I got off on all that, but uh, <laughs> I did, didn't I? <laughs> it's my show, right? Yeah. John's not even here to rein me in on the shooting the breezes. Of course, in a gun video, I don't really need reining in, you know, unless I'm just shooting too much. He has to slow me down and uh, give me a signal. Hey, Dad, we got to go eat some point here, and the video is an hour and a half long. But how to get off on that? Let me backtrack. Well, you know, the world's imperfect, and we don't really, when we're young, we don't really understand. You know, we really don't. Uh, I know I don't mean to be condescending. Uh, I thought I was a genius when I was, you know, 18 or 20 or 21. And as you get older, John's admitted this, you know, when you, uh, you think you're really an adult in your 20 or early 20s, and I, the more and more, uh, I'm, well, I'm not sure we ever, you know, fully mature, of course, and we never know everything and never know all we need to know. You know, we all just continually blunder through and still make mistakes. But I, I, I think you, you got to get into your 30s really before you start maturing much. That's just me, but I really think you do. No, it depends how you define maturing, but uh, some people mature early. I've had middle school students who, oh my gosh, if I had a company and was hiring, you know, and they were old enough to work, I'd hire them the next day. You know, I mean, there are some really mature people out there at an early age. I don't know how they get that way. Uh, it's usually not the guys. <laughs> Sometimes it is, but uh, yeah, we just we just we don't know what we don't know, and we just kind of got to have experience and, and figure out the world. And you know, when you're little, you think your dad and your mommy know everything, and they never make mistakes. You know, and then you gradually realize, oh, wait a minute, uh, yeah, they do. They don't know everything. You know, and then they get divorced or whatever happens. You know, you realize that, that even adults. Don't don't know everything, you know. So that's an early realization, isn't it? And uh, then you start realizing that some of these adults are killing people, you know, whatever, you know. And some of them are dangerous to be around. Why won't my mommy and daddy let me go out on the street by myself or, or out of the house, you know, without them watching me, you know? You can't trust everybody. You know, the world is is not that ideal place we wish it were. You know? So, how I got off on that, I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, that. I had about eight things I thought I might talk about, but I guess I won't now, right? Well, no, let's, let's go on. Uh, that's why I, uh, I like to do this, because I can talk about whatever I want to. And uh, you all can click out whatever you want to. But we were talking about the uh, NRA meeting and, uh, and meeting a lot of you, and that was great. Uh, saw a lot of guns, didn't see all the guns, probably the new ones, but yeah, I know about a lot of them and I learn about them and, and I hear about them and uh, see them online and get them in from buds like the, the side loader from uh, Henry. I didn't even see it, I think, at the at the show, did I? I, I don't know, I, I, I remember seeing a couple other things there, but I forgot they were coming out with that. And, but anyway, I've got one, shot it yesterday, yeah. So we've been uh, shooting some different things, uh, and it worked fine. Yeah, we'll, uh, you'll see that posted for too long. Uh, post a picture on Instagram. We had a, a few malfunctions with our compact security nine. Been shooting that. 
Oh uh, gosh, Bedellium 4, you've seen that. I don't know what all you haven't seen yet. Uh, but uh, let's see, what did we do? Just, oh yeah, I just sent back the SIG X carry. Now you have, have you? No, you've not, well, you'll see that really soon. Okay, video on the uh, X carry from SIG. And I like that gun. I like that pistol. I, if I didn't own any SIGs, if I didn't own that compact uh, 320, if I didn't own the M17 especially, and I just thought, you know what, I need a SIG, and I looked through them all, uh, that would probably be the one I'd pick up. Okay, so, uh, you, know, you know, I like a Glock 19 kind of gun or a, just a, a handy firearm like that. Uh, you pick up that X carry, and it just fits like a glove, and it's a good shooter. It's just a well-balanced firearm. It, well, you know, like the 19X, you know, the uh, FN 509, you've got the long grip and the shorter slide and everything. They just balance well and shoot well. So nice trigger. Love the flat trigger on that thing. Uh, it's got a, I think uh, it's a big red, I think it's a tritium uh, sights on it, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. But I shot it, we did a video, main video, and I uh, shot it for a couple of weeks off and on and then did a, uh, a chapter or two with it and I didn't want to send it back right away I really wanted to shoot it more that's one of those firearms that I could have just sent back after the one video and uh, it's, uh, hang on to it a little while I'll shoot it some more I, even if the viewers don't want to see a chapter two on it I, I'm going to shoot it some more and we'll do a chapter two okay we don't force anybody to watch anything you know? Uh, I know early on some people thought that uh, doing a chapter two on something or, or something like this or whatever, it, it keeps you from doing a, a new gun video. No, no, no. We do what we want to do. We can't do a new gun video every two or three days. It would, I don't know, that, that machine gun effect would just be, uh, I don't know, it, I, I just wouldn't be interested in doing that necessarily. We do a new, a new gun, a, a firearm you've not seen, you know what I'm saying, a uh, firearm we've not done a video on. I don't know, one or two a week, generally, I guess, on average. And then we, uh, we the ones we like or we think more interesting, uh, we just want to shoot again. We may do a chapter two. And then uh, we have all of our other series, you know, our small game hunt, large, big game hunts, and range two videos we do with some guns. And we don't do everything on every range, you know, every type of video or every series. But uh, if the firearm seems to be, uh, I don't know, appropriate for that or, or suited, well suited for it, or, or just I just want to do it, or, you know, we just do it. So we just do what we do, you know. <laughs> We're just glad enough of you, uh, you know, tune in to make it worthwhile. So that's one reason we've been doing this so long and we keep doing it. I think if we had a regimen that we had to follow that we weren't that crazy about, but let's say we would get another, a double our views or something or whatever, uh, but we didn't enjoy it as much. You know, I'm just not interested, not interested, you know. Uh, uh, I, I want to enjoy doing this, you know. And like, like what I'm doing right now is kind of dumb to get right down to it. You know, I'm sitting in the woods talking to you about uh, not irrelevant things, but just whatever comes to mind. And, you know, just, just like to do it occasionally. So what else? What else do you want me to talk about? Okay, what else did we do? Now we did go to a uh, went to Atlanta last weekend. What is today? Yeah, this is I'm talking to you on Thursday, and uh, we went down on Friday. Yeah, it was down Friday and Saturday down at uh, Adventure Outdoors. We were invited down by uh, uh, Tim from Military Arms Channel and Eric from Iraq Vet. Uh, they were having a Patreon uh, thing and uh, for their patrons and so we notified our our patrons on our patreon account which is a lot of you and uh and we went also so we accepted that invitation and had a good time that's a it's an incredible gun shop if you're ever in smyrna georgia uh adventure outdoors is this massive gun shop i think they claim to have sixteen thousand firearms but uh so it was kind of fun. I got to see those people. Suits was there, one of our favorite uh, humans, and some other folks. It was just it was a good event. So uh, we enjoyed that. But uh, it's always good to see you all. We, I run into you. I ran a couple of you this morning. You know, going to buy a battery. You know, it, I mean, I, I know we get a lot of invitations to go here and there in various states and do meet and greets. And again, we're not a traveling band. You know, we do videos and. 
uh, uh, and we meet you all all the time. It's just we can't meet all of you, you know. Uh, it's kind of interesting. And it is a weird thing, you know. I've talked about that a little bit before. Um, we're, you know, we're not real celebrities, but enough people know about us that it's it, it does eat up your privacy to some extent. It's, it's kind of weird, you know. When you, it happens all the time. I go into a store just to buy something. And someone will help me and look around and we'll be checking out or whatever. And then say, oh, by the way, I like your video, you know, or I'll be in a restaurant and there's people sitting around and, and, and uh, somebody will come over after they're finished, maybe the next table. That's happened many, many times. And, you know, and say, I appreciate your videos, et cetera, et cetera. Like, you know, and, and so, you know, I've got to just quit cursing so much when I'm out in public because I never know when you all are there. Just, just kidding. But it is kind of weird. It's, it's even though this, you know, smaller celebrity status is what it is. It's uh, a lot of people watch gun videos, and uh, a lot of people are into firearms. And so I have to assume almost wherever I go, it's just, just like buying a battery this morning at O'Reilly's. You know, the guy's really helpful in showing the battery, and then, and uh, I'm showing a picture on my camera of the old battery. Want to make sure it fit my tractor and everything. And, and then a, a gun video or a gun picture <laughs> as I was shuffling through the. I said, oh, yeah, I'm a gun nut. You know, I said, yeah, I know. I watch your videos. You know, and, it's, <laughs> and so uh, anyway, it, it, it's kind of a, uh, a strange life in, in some ways. But, but it's good because it's not, it's not like a real celebrity. You know, I, I can't I mean, I get a little, a little uh, piece of what it must be like to be a real celebrity. You know, it's like some country music singer or something or a rock star or someone who anywhere they go, you know, everybody recognizes or a, a gigantic portion of people percentage recognize them and it's really got to mess with their minds you know like we're to the point where it's it's just you know i always enjoy meeting viewers anyway and people are usually glad because they like the videos and everything so it's always a positive experience and and it's you know i get into gun conversations with people so i you know so it's it's, it's all good uh but it's it is interesting just uh you know, especially this late in life or something weird. I was used to this a little bit when I played basketball, you know, within the, especially the towns where I play around Clarksville and Nashville, you know, you get recognized. People want to give me advice about playing basketball or whatever, but, uh, uh, but, but not on this level, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting, but, uh, and it's an indicator, uh, you know, too, that people are watching. And so we're always glad, glad of that. So we're, and, and again, as I've told y'all before, if you're new, don't ever hesitate to say hi, because that's, you know, and that's something that people apologize all the time, you know, wherever it is, restaurant or anywhere, you know, like they ask for a picture or something, and they're, and they're uh, so apologetic. Uh, and I mean, generally speaking, that's never been a problem. And again, you guys are the reason, gals and guys, that we're able to do this for a living. Okay, I get to shoot for a living. Okay, so you just keep that in mind. If you're ever hesitant, because I get emails all the time or, or on Facebook messages, and I saw you today, and I didn't want to bother you, whatever. Uh, generally speaking, that is never a, a problem, okay? You guys pay our salaries, so to speak. Uh, it's because of you all that, that we get to shoot for a living, all right? You know, it's just that simple. So it would be pretty arrogant uh, not to keep that in my mind. So you can keep that in your mind if you ever catch yourself being hesitant to say hi all right so enough on that my little lecture but we had a good time down in georgia and uh there was something about that or what was i don't remember now some big story i was going to tell some big lie well i bought a 3d target while i was there i have been uh getting my shoulder back in shape for archery been working on it slowly because i hadn't shot in like three years i took three years off totally it wasn't by uh, uh, wasn't intentional. I didn't have like a health problem or anything. I just I just didn't get the bow out. And when you don't get it out, oh, say for whatever a month or two months or three months, it, it drags on. Okay, you have gotten to a point where you got to break back in slowly. Now, I've got a piece of rubber surgical tube I use works really well. You just uh, you know you're standing around the living room whatever and just you know work your shoulder a little bit. That that same the same muscles in the back and shoulder. Because they're muscles you don't use, and uh, if you don't know about archery, you can go out and pull a bow. If you haven't pulled a bow in a long time, pull a thing. Because you got to pull it all the way back. It's not like you can go out with. It's not like a firearm. 
uh, <laughs> well, I haven't shot for a while, let's take three shots today and then five tomorrow. <laughs> it's not like that because your index is like right here, you know, generally I'll shoot traditional, a long bow, a recurve. And so you got to pull back to the same point every time or else it's like having a different powder charge in your bullet, your cartridge every time, all right? So you got to get the same pull on the on the string, right? Back to there and just let it go, all right? So generally you're shooting a bow that is takes some strength to pull back, right? And as you get in shape, and it's not a problem. Well, you haven't touched your bow in six months. Yeah, let's shoot a couple of arrows. You pull all the way back, you know, like you got to do. And oh man, you pull a muscle or something worse, maybe. And then you're out of commission, uh, at least for archery, for maybe a year. Okay. So what I do when I go through those spells where I don't shoot is I my surgical too. If I know I want to get my shoulder back in shape, I know a match is coming up or something. Then I'll just do that a little bit every day for a while and touch the bow. You know, in fact, I definitely intentionally don't touch the bow. I, I, I do that for several days, you know, and then I get the bow and maybe take a few shots and not many, you know, because I don't want to mess it up. Uh, as long as you don't mess up your shoulder then you, and you're shooting regularly, then you can just every day. It's just like shooting this pistol. And then you don't have to think about that. But, uh, but anyway, unless you've got a really, really weak bow, Okay, I guess maybe you wouldn't you know, hurt your shoulder or your back pull a muscle or anything like that. But I've just known too many people have done that. They've, they've hurt their uh, shoulder to where they can't even pull a bow anymore. Now, I'm not talking about ancient people. I'm talking about my nephew had trouble with that. He was a deer hunter. I think it was a compound bow. He just hadn't pulled the bow back in forever. And then uh, he was deer hunting, pulled back on, on a deer up in Kentucky. And he wrecked, wrecked his shoulder. He couldn't uh, bow hunt or pull a bow for, I don't know, years, I think. So anyway, more than you wanted to know, but thought I'd share that with you. But I am getting back and I'm enjoying it. Bought that 3D deer target and uh, got it set up there. And uh, we'll do a couple of archery videos. We've not done any in a long time. I apologize for that. Because uh, I like archery. Uh, I don't know. It's just I don't, don't get to it. I forget about it. But it's like throwing darts if you've ever done it, especially traditional archery with like a recurve. And it's just fun to go out with your arrows and, you know, maybe you got a cigar, maybe not, whatever you go, wherever you're shooting from and, and just, you know, take your time, enjoy it. You know, shoot five or six arrows and go get them, come back, take your time. And just, uh, that's, there's something about it. It's kind of addictive. It really is. It's just like this stuff, right? <laughs> what else was I going to talk about? Um, uh, YouTube, oh boy, demonetization. Uh, a lot of you have asked me about that. Are we uh, being demonetized? And because apparently there's more of that going around. Yeah, the videos are being demonetized on a regular basis. Uh, uh, some of them just a few days after they're up, some the same day. Uh, now, when I say demonetize, I mean they're set for limited or no ads, which essentially means no ads. So, you know, it's funny how you guys will make a comment sometimes when you see an ad roll before a video I say wow hey about that uh, I, I'm it's good to see you have ads yeah it's like a you're astonished that an ad is running yeah so it's always good to know one runs occasionally right but yeah they're at the gun videos they're just uh, I don't know if YouTube is overreacting uh, from our conversations with them they claim they're not anti-gun they want to you know have a a free platform and all that kind of thing for and and uh, exert freedom or whatever but they seem to be going overboard in terms of protecting their advertisers you know now i understand if because uh, a lot of companies don't want to be placed next to firearms videos it's that's that simple you know whether it's i don't know who it is necessarily whether it might be wendy's and i'm just throwing out names or maybe it's chevrolet or or maybe it's kawasaki i don't know who it is uh, but I'm sure there are companies that let them know, uh, you know, uh, in no uncertain terms, we do not want our ads running on gun videos. Yeah. And partly it might be because there's, there is some craziness out there, right? In gun videos. And they don't want their, their ads running. Or they're just anti-gun. They don't care what kind of, could be me with a muzzleloader. They don't. They don't want their ads running. Obviously, they don't because the ads are uh, are 
you know, the, the videos that are set for no ads are muzzle-loading videos as well. They could be anything, a, a revolver video. It's not just a machine gun video, you know, at all. It's just, just any old random video. So anyway, that's just part of it. And uh, as I've said before, uh, don't plan to make a, your fortune in YouTube, you know, uh, with YouTube, uh, unless you get a lot of, a lot of viewers and uh, and can get some sponsors because you're not going to get uh, a lot of money for for certain from YouTube <laughs> unless you're doing something out of the the firearms world maybe and it is funny I watch other videos uh, it, <laughs> it, that are off topic they're not on the gun topic firearms and you know there's all, ads running all the time you know start every video you got to click out of them and then you know three minutes in and eight minutes in is another one it's like wow it's like what universe am i in here this is like <laughs> it's boy must be nice you know uh these people with ten thousand subscribers making more than we are i'm sure you know just in the uh you know the the google ads you know so, but anyway yeah to answer your question you know long way around yeah we're we're getting demonetized too now we have not apparently there are some people who've had like their entire channel demonetized i don't know how uh the people who ask me about that i'm not sure what you're seeing i've heard some stories about some other channels and gun channels and I, and it, it also comes down to how they explain it and what they're saying and what's really happening uh are they are they getting all their video? They're getting every, the whole channel demonetized and shut down, or are they getting? Uh, well, not necessarily shut down, but just being declared. Okay, you can have no ads of any kind ever again on any video. Is that what's happening? That has not happened to us. Uh, but when almost every video is being set reset, you know, for limited or no ads, that's what a lot of us consider demonetization. But we've got some videos that have not been declared that yet. You know, they're working on all of them. It's pretty obvious. But so anyway, that's kind of where we are. And, but I, I do sense that there's there are a few gun channels that have been hit harder than that even. So you know, let me know. I don't know. Uh, but speaking of that, we, you know, uh, we're putting all of our videos over on GunStreamer.com. Uh, just so you know, uh, a wonderful site, really. It's just so much like YouTube. And it's very easy to post. You can manage, uh, like I can update all the uh, comments, the descriptions, just like on YouTube. And when we have a new meet and greet scheduled, I can, uh, I can. Uh, I mean, it takes a little bit of time with them, but I can redo the template I have, and both on GunStreamer and YouTube, and then all 1,700 videos. You know, that description is there. That's why I would remind people: if you want to know if there's a meet and greet coming up, any of the links. You can go to our website, Hickok45.com, for the supporter links and various things. But uh, anything you want to know about meet and greets or everybody, the sponsors' links, they're always in the description. And it's every description of every video. Okay, we, I mean, we promote that with our sponsors. Like, it's immediately, if you come on and support us, then you immediately get your link in every description, not just going forward, right? So, so that's beautiful to be able to do that. Uh, we can't do that on full 30, you know, and uh, managing, uh, it's just all, there are four or five different things that are just very difficult to manage over there, and so I really kind of quit posting over there. I mean, I, I, nothing against full 30, it's just difficult to manage, and uh, some of our videos, like this one, a lot of them are too long. Uh, they exceed the limit over there, and, and when I found GunStreamer and talked to them, and oh my gosh, they... Some of these features they actually created as I suggested them. I wonder, this is what I'm looking for. I really need this. You know, when you have as many videos as we have, they actually created it, some of those capabilities, you know, and, and tweaked them and everything. It was like a matter of days, you know. And I've been trying to, to get some of that done over in Full 30 for years. You know? So, so I mean, not again, not to trash Full 30. It's a good, good place, gun-friendly place, right? But GunStreamer.com is where all of our videos are, everything. Everything is always over there. Okay, so uh, just be aware of that. You know, if YouTube goes away tomorrow, uh, all of our videos are over there and intact, and we'll be able to communicate with you You're right over there without any trouble. And um, descriptions and all the links, and you know, and they're gun friendly. Can you believe that? I bet that's why they're called gunstreamer.com. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, now, I can't think of anything else other than, oh, yeah, speaking of meet and greets. 
we do have one. I, and we still got the ones from the NRA in the descriptions. Like, okay, I, I'm not going to update that. There's a little bit of a process there. You can do it without too much trouble. But I just redo that template when, when things become obsolete. Basically, when there's something new that needs to be in there when I do it. Uh, so, I mean, there's meet and greets there, uh, showing meet and greets you know, on whatever, April, some date. You know, well, obviously, April's already passed. That was the NRA meeting. But there's one in there that uh, in that list of meet and greets that has not occurred yet. And that's in uh, July on the 20th here in Nashville on uh, at the gun, let's see, Nashville Gun and Knife. Okay? So they've been asking for a couple of years if we'd do a meet and greet there. And so we, we are. It's... Uh, over in West Nashville and uh, off of, I guess, Harding Pike, West Me, that area there, if you're familiar with that, kind of where the road forks off, Highway 100, uh, going west, I guess, and then 70, going out to Bellevue or whatever. So, uh, so we'll be there on the 20th. It's from uh, 1 to 3, okay, on July 20th. So if you're in the Nashville area or even if you're not, if you are living right now in Hong Kong, or you're living in uh, Toronto, or Australia, okay? Or you're in Brazil somewhere. You're in, in uh, uh, London. Guess what? You could get a flight, fly to Nashville, and rent a car, and drive over to Nashville Gun and Knife, and you would get the incredible pleasure of shaking my hand. Wouldn't that be worth it? <laughs> No, really, uh, come on out. I mean, it's one of those, it's one of those times when, you know, you, you got us pinned down, you know. I, I meet you guys all the time, uh, you know, like I say, uh, often, often, almost every time I go out anywhere, not anywhere, but I see you a lot. I go to a gun show or somewhere, hit gun shops and sporting goods store. I ran to a lot of you and, and uh, you know, all that. So, so from my, my end, my perspective, I'm always meeting you people, okay? <laughs> I'm meeting you all. Uh, but then again, I know because I hear from you all the time that uh, people ask, when are you going to do a meeting? Where are you going to be up here? When are you going to be there? Well, here's one place we're going to be, okay, for a couple hours. So at Nashville Gun and Knife on July 20th, come on out. <laughs> like it's such a, an incredible adventure and pleasure to meet us, right? Uh, no, we, we appreciate you all watching and we're always happy to meet you and uh, make fun of you, okay? That's what I do best, make fun of people. It's tough because, you know, it's been six years since I taught now. I've been out of the classroom for six years. Oh, man. You know, that's like maybe some of you all had a drinking problem and you, you gave it up and you've not had a, a drop to drink or maybe a cigarette for, you know, six years. Well, then you can relate to what it's like for me because I have not been able to say something mean or to insult a teenager for six years, you know, I mean, you gotta think about the pleasure that I had. I had captive audience all day long of middle schoolers the last 20 some years I taught. A captive audience all day long of middle schoolers. And they've gotta at least act like they're interested, right? They, they gotta act like they know I'm the teacher, right? And they gotta stay there. They can't get up and leave, you know, right? Okay. <laughs> and I can make all the fun of them I want to. I can test their gullibility every day. See, so that was a uh, that was a pleasure I took for granted because I could do it for so long, and now I can't. You know, I mean, I get rare opportunities, but it's just tough. That's why at meet and greets when you have your kids with you, you know, I immediately, I immediately say hi to you, and then I I direct my my abuse <laughs> to your 12 year old or whoever, <laughs> because I have I don't get many opportunities to pick on them and and. Uh, and test their gullibility and all that sort of thing. So I told my students the last spring, the last year I was teaching, because I knew I was going to leave like uh, two years in advance. I gave them two years notice, uh, knowing I wouldn't have time to do both. And uh, for any longer than that, and uh, I said, look, you watch for me. I'll be, there'll be an article about me on the, in the newspaper. You'll see my uh, mug shot, you know, because I will be arrested. And there it'll be, you know, former teacher arrested, insulting students at the mall randomly insulting young people at the mall or something like that that had labeled some some random creep at the mall former teacher <laughs> i said i'll just be walking along the mall not that i go to malls much and there'll be a a group of kids your all's age 
and I just won't be able to resist. I'll just have to say uh, something like, have y'all been doing your homework? You know, or, or something, make fun of their hair, you know, just have to do something like that. So, anyway, it's tough, it's tough. Uh, and there's no 12-step program for that sort of thing. Because for one thing, people don't even expect you to be mean. If you're a teacher, you're not even supposed to be mean and be testing the gullibility every minute and, and all that kind of thing. You're not supposed to do that anyway. You're supposed to be extra kind to your students every minute, right? So why would there be a 12-step program now? Yeah. So I just have to deal with it on my own. And it's been tough because it was an addiction uh, that I enjoyed. I enjoyed and I got really good at it. I was a master at it, in fact. Yeah, I was. And and you know what I miss? I'm, I might even start carrying my pop quiz coin again because I carried a silver dollar every year. I may have told you all this story. Uh, I uh, I would, uh, you know, flip a coin. Uh, I gave a lot of pop quizzes, first of all. And no one hardly ever, it happened, but very rarely did people come to my class not having read the assignment, okay? Because they knew... First of all, they'd be getting questioned and have to enter the discussion. But also, that I would start class with a little six-question pop quiz or something, uh, or 12 or 20, I don't know, uh, just to make sure they had read it, okay? So to, so they wouldn't have the option of not reading. That, that was a lot of it right there. They weren't all penetrating questions, but they knew they had to read it. And we find out how carefully they read it, you know, as we moved on through the class. But uh, it would always be some... Uh, two or three tough questions where you need not only needed to read it, but you needed to read it carefully if you're going to make a hundred on this pop quiz. Okay, I mean, you know, it was, they were, I would design them so that if you read the material, you're paying attention, you do fine. You know, you get a B, C plus, A. You know, you'd, you'd be okay. You might get them all, uh, but to guarantee you're going to get an A or an A plus on it. You, you need to read carefully. You know, there's a little bit of a stretcher there, too. It won't make them too easy. But, uh, but I, I did that a lot. I would flip a coin. You know, it has a silver dollar, and I'd let them call it. And, of course, I'd, I'd often arrange it so they would lose, whether <laughs> uh, I had my little games there, too. And, uh, but I always had the silver dollar in my pocket. And then at the end of the year, the last day of school, of classes, I would uh, present the silver dollar to one of my students. And so there's like whatever, 10 or 15 of them out there. And I've got it right written down who they are walking around with a pop quiz coin right now. And I hope they haven't pawned the coin and sold it. I'll be cr I'd be crushed if, if they have. But I, uh, that's what I would do. And I, I would, I'd let them flip it. And if I taught brothers and sisters, sometimes we'd have fun, let the brother or sister come in, let them you know, abuse their brother, their sibling, and flip the coin. <laughs> And, uh, and then we'd uh, and let the, the brother call it, you know, or sister, heads or tails. And then, uh, then we might just happen to claim that, oh, no, I think you said tails. No, you got a quiz. No, you said heads. I think you said tails. You know, yeah, so we, like I said, you know, it was an addiction. So I miss it. But uh, I'm not enough to go back. Not enough to go back. Okay. I would rather shoot. Okay. And, uh, yeah, it's just more. More fun. Well, I don't know if it's more fun, but it's something different, you know. You got you to give up uh, something to get something else, don't you? So anyway, gosh, what else could I ramble about? I, I have been in uh, extreme ramble mode. I apologize, okay? Next time I won't uh, maybe get off on so many sidetracks. Because I got off from the get-go. I started, I mean, I, I, as soon as I started talking about the NRA meeting, and the dirty laundry that got aired there, and still getting aired. I got off down a lot of roads, and uh, hopefully some of it meant something, I don't know. But, you know, I, I, I do feel like having been on the planet a pretty good while now, and being of just reasonable intelligence, you know, maybe I have something to offer if I do talk philosophically a little bit, uh, or, or share life experiences, or uh, some of that, because really I'm, I am just one of you. I've just lived here longer, uh, on this planet longer, right? Uh, that's it. And uh, in some ways, you know, maybe it's it's more helpful to hear some things if you're a young person from me than from a genius. Because even though I had my students convinced I was a genius, uh, you all know I'm not. Uh, average intelligence. I've just been around a while. I've had a lot of experiences, and uh, so. 
you know, boy, this is extreme rationalization, isn't it? But, but maybe experiences shared by someone who is not all that smart in what they have gotten from those experiences is perhaps a little more helpful than experiences shared by someone with 150 IQ. Yeah, because most of you don't have 150 IQ. You're like me, right? You just got 149 IQ. <laughs> so anyway, I'll try not to be so uh, <clears throat> philosophical next time. But, uh, and I didn't talk about guns a lot. I realized we've got several coming up. Uh, you know, we've got the Wrangler from Ruger, got them in the safe, uh, shot them a little bit. Uh, I could say the Henry uh, side, they call it the Henry side gate, I think. Yeah, Henry side gate. I and mean, it's got a loading gate. Um, got a, got a, a Pedersoli Colt Lightning. I mean, it's a Pedersoli, but it's, you know, see it, their reproduction of the old Colt Lightning. Okay, you all requested that. Uh, I've got a, a Marlin we're going to compare with the Henry. You know, if you're out looking for a 3030 to go hunting with in the year 2019, and you're trying to, I don't know, Henry makes a nice one now. The guy even got a side gate, and Marlin, uh, Marlin's worth buying, and so we got a couple of guns in the same price category we're going to compare. Uh, we've got a Walther, uh, what, Q5? Uh, yeah, you can get some other firearms you haven't seen yet. And you know you're going to see some vintage firearms, right? And I'm anxious to get the muzzle loaders out. I've not shot a muzzle loader for a while. And I have no excuses now. It's not winter. So I'm going to get out and get all dirty and get my hands black from messing with that black powder. Burn some charcoal. My gosh. We haven't done a chapter two with uh, my 20 gauge double barrel shotgun muzzle loader or the how to pistol the muzzle loader. Uh, I don't know if we've done a chapter two with my Mississippi rifle. I don't remember. Oh, I'm going to shoot them all though. I'm going to, I'm going to shoot them all. I've got hand, I've got a Walker Colt. I mean, it's a better solely, but it's a, yeah, like I have a real Walker Colt. I think there's what a hundred of them in existence now or something. Uh, left, but I got uh, that big monstrosity that we've not. I've had that all winter, and uh, we'll we'll shoot that. So I've got to make myself do it. Those percussion pistols are a bit of a pain, <laughs> but they're so interesting and so historical. I'm going to force myself. I'm going to shoot that thing for you. Tell you all about it in the history. I'm going to get. Uh, I've never done a chapter two on the. Uh, oh gosh. The, I'm drawing a blank. Dragoon. Yeah, the Dragoon, uh, which is another big one, right? Uh, I've got another one you've not seen, uh, Cap and Ball, an original. So a lot of black powder coming this summer and fall, all right? Uh, maybe, hopefully not too much for you, uh, but I love that stuff, you know, and uh, just like I enjoy these. So as I've said before, I have long, long, uh, had interest in such a variety of firearms uh, and uh, I mean I was just kind of well suited to, to do this sort of thing because I'm not uh, I'm not just interested in you know semi-automatic pistols for example or uh, or muscle loaders and, and 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 as I've said before that wasn't ever a marketing plan oh, we've never had a marketing plan <laughs> uh, it was just me you know, all my guns, I have such a wide variety. I've always had a wide variety that I've, because I have an interest in, in all sorts of firearms. And so it, it's not a, an issue even of where uh, we're doing videos on a wide variety of firearms, but we really only like ARs or something. You know, but we know that a lot of other people like these these guns like this or muzzle loaders, so we'll do some videos on them. So it's, it's not even that. It's... Uh, it's, I love those guns, and, and I love all those, those different types of firearms. It's just fascinating uh, to me, as it is with many of you, the machinery and how, whether it's a flintlock or a cap lock or a, uh, an old steel uh, 1911 like this or a polymer uh, wonder that's being made today that's so incredibly reliable and fun to shoot. They're all fascinating to me and always have been, and uh, I just enjoy all of them. You know, it's that simple. So uh, I was kind of built for this, uh, other than, again, being a low IQ. But I stumble along and do the best I can. So we don't have a lot of secrets. You know, you, you realize that. You should know by now after 11 years that I ain't all that bright. I ramble too much. 
uh, and even in shooting videos. We have our warts, you know, just like I was saying earlier. Everybody, every company, everything has its warts. It's just a matter, I guess, when the warts get so bad, you just can't deal with it anymore, you know. But everything has its negatives. Everybody has their negatives, and every company does. Uh, however, you, you can't excuse everything. It gets to a certain point, you know, when that water level gets to a certain point, you bail out. You got to bail, right? It just depends. But uh, I think we have to be careful, though, because, again, uh, that's much of it's to be expected, you know, when you're dealing with human beings. And you got to look at the overall picture as much as possible, still keeping in mind that you've got to, you know, be true to yourself. You know, be true to yourself. Uh, it's important, important to your standards and all that. So somebody shut me up, will you? Can anybody reach in here and turn off the camera? Besides me, I've got a remote in my pocket. And uh, I can actually do it. You know, I forget this half the time. So today I'm not going to. I'll put this remote down here. And so you won't know I'm actually using the remote. All right. And uh, even though I'm an expert now at editing, I can, I can, I can, I can do better now in rendering. I render a lot of the videos, and the thing I'm not very good at is slow motion. Uh, I need to work on that. But uh, John, you know, reminds me that now with YouTube, you can do slow motion anything you want to do anyway. So it's not quite as important to add slow motion to a video. Uh, but other than that, I, I can do anything, man. I can trim them and insert and, uh, and all that kind of thing. I'm a genius. Maybe I'm a genius after all. So we appreciate y'all coming by and, you know, watching the videos. I know that uh, only a certain percentage of you watch the Shooting the Breezes, thankfully, because not everybody's insane, right? But uh, you folks that do watch the Shooting the Breezes are some of the most avid uh, viewers. Either that or you're just looking for material to bash me with. <laughs> but you are the most avid, uh, loyal viewers, and we really appreciate you all, okay? And... For you young folks or new viewers that haven't seen one of these yet, uh, sorry, apologize. <laughs> this is just what I do. Just note when you see shooting the breeze, uh, man, yeah, he's not kidding. That really is just shooting the breeze. You know, I thought he was going to fire some guns or, or do something interesting. So, so you'll know. Okay, it's your fault if you hang around very long and get mad. All right, get frustrated because I haven't said anything intelligent. It's not my fault. It's your fault. We've been doing this a long time. So people should know what to expect. That's what's funny. I thought I was gone, didn't you? When, uh, like, well, deep woods, deep woods thoughts. That's from, yeah, hey, don't leave yet. Uh, every time we post a, sometimes with an FAQ video uh, or a deep woods thought, because they're all numbered, like the FAQ video, we're on like, what, 80 or 90? FAQ 90 or something. Somebody will watch FAQ uh, video number 80, and they'll leave a comment that, whoa, what happened to life is good? Or, or well, why didn't you shoot? What was wrong, you know? Uh, well, you know, we've got 80 of these videos. You might look back and, and, and notice that we don't really shoot in any of them. <laughs> you know, this is number 80, or what are you doing? Uh, we posted the Deep Woods Thought recently, and uh, I don't know what that is, Deep Woods Thought 27 or something like that, 26, I don't know, whatever we're up to. And the same thing, you get, you get some comments of people, well, well, where was the shooting, you know, or what's that about? That was stupid or what? Oh, yeah, yeah, kind of. That's, that's the 27th time we've done that exact thing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so you would think people would say, okay, it's Deep Woods Thought number 27. You know, even if you're really perplexed, what is this? This is stupid. You know, you're a new viewer. You just started you know, watching our videos a few weeks ago or something, and you haven't seen any of the Deep Woods Thoughts. Well, you would think by the title, Deep Woods Thought 26, whatever it was, even if you're totally mad or perplexed, frustrated, okay, well, let me, let me dig into some other Deep Woods Thoughts and see what this is about. And then you would think if you watch two or three of them, only a minute long, you oh, okay, I see, he's just having fun. And I was just having fun. It's funny how people read so much into things, you know, that anything you say that's in the least bit philosophical, you know, okay, what's the real meaning here? What's the, the deeper underlying meaning here? You know, and maybe there is sometimes, I don't know. But uh, as per that video, that most recent one, you know, we interpret things just, 
you know, the different ways we see meaning others don't see and all that kind of thing. Uh, I was having fun. We just have fun in those things. That's just kind of fun. Maybe throw a little philosophy out there. Again, it's deep woods thought. So we're deep in the woods. Who knows? Maybe there's even a deep thought that will creep into it every occasion, every every now and then. You know, uh, I pull a line of poetry quite often from from mine. I've always liked poetry. You know, and uh, it, you know, so I don't know. I just pull out a line or something. You know, kind of a meaningful line to me. And uh, maybe it's meaningful to somebody else. Maybe it'll make somebody think. Maybe somebody else will want to go into the deep woods and think deeply. Yeah. I'm sort of in the deep woods right now. But you might not accuse me of thinking deeply, right? Yeah, not really. Not in a shooting the breeze. So, you know, the name says it. Shooting the breeze. We're breezy, lighthearted. Nothing too intelligent. Nothing too deep. Now, I appreciate you all. I'll get out of here. Uh, and uh, quit rambling at you and uh, we enjoy doing what we're doing and we're glad you guys come around and watch the, the, the firearms videos we uh, we're not the best in the world I know we don't give as thorough a review as some people do we don't even try to we just give you our opinion of the firearm house shoots and give you some facts about it uh, we take pride in being totally objective not tied to any gun companies you know that alone is a big statement all right you know thinking gun media I guess we're a part of gun media, right? We are not tied, obligated in any way to any gun company, okay? Or to anybody. We don't review anything we take help from, as I have said often. You know, you can criticize us because you don't like, maybe you don't like federal. Maybe you don't like the NRA. Maybe you don't like uh, uh, SDI. You don't like uh, who else? You don't like uh, the Talon Grips, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'm leaving somebody else. You, you don't like one of our sponsors or something. I don't know. But we do not, we're very transparent. We do not review anything uh, like made by a company, an entity that supports us or whatever, okay? You'll never see us doing a side-by-side, -side, uh, bad-mouthing a competitor to the NRA, to uh, SDI, to Federal, to tell you that we're not going to bad mouth, that'd be stupid. That would be stupid. That'd make no sense. I mean, what kind of credibility would you have? Well, you're, so you're talking bad about Chevrolet. Oh, uh, you know, you're sponsored by Ford, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter if what I said about Chevrolet is true, if it was negative. It, I didn't have no credibility doing that. That's crazy. I mean, so anyway, uh, as I mentioned to some of you, we had an opportunity a year ago, a couple years ago, whenever, to have a gun, a Hickok 45 version of a firearm. Actually, it could have been uh, a couple or three different firearms that they even had choice on it and what we wanted in it and that kind of thing. And uh, at first, like, hey, man, cool, cool, we've made it. <laughs> yeah. But then we had, uh, no, wait a minute, uh, wait a minute, how do we do that? What if, uh, what if uh, we have a Hickok 45 1911 and it's got exactly the stuff that I like or a Glock 19? And it's got exactly what I want on it. You know, it's the way I would build it, you know, and the grip and the sights and all that kind of thing or whatever it might be. And and I like, you know, obviously, or if my name's on it, I must really like and think the Glock 19 is the, the best gun or, or, or whatever the gun might be or an M&P. Uh, how would we continue doing what we're doing the way we do it? We'd be violating our, the way we operate. Yeah, how would how would how would we review a pistol that competes in a category with with the Hickok 45 pistol? You know, um, so anyway, we kind of work ourselves into a corner, you know, by by remaining uh, totally independent uh, that way. But uh, but it's worth it, and, and and we hear from you all all the time how you appreciate it, and uh, so we're going to continue that really, you know, whatever the cost, okay, whatever the cost. So. Anyway, just again, remind you how we operate. We're very transparent. Yeah, we tell you where we get every firearm. Since day one, any firearm that you have seen, unless you don't see it till it's a woods walk or a chapter two or something, but in the first video with that firearm, uh, I don't know if there's even one video where we forgot to or, or just didn't say where this firearm came from. It's mine or borrowed from buds or someone gave it, you know, back in the day, we would take a free gun occasionally. We don't do that now, but you know, but we, it's always transparent. You know where that firearm came from 
and uh, that's the way we operate. So just if you're new and you survive through this thing, I must have gone an hour and a half. I, I'm afraid to look at my, my watch, my phone. But uh, just want to remind you all that. A lot of new people every day and uh, it'll let you know how we operate if you haven't figured that out yet. Okay. So I'm going to have to let you go now, <laughs> whether I'm finished or not. Because I know you are. I think there's one person left watching. He's on the couch snoring with pizza on his lap. <laughs> so we'll talk to you all later. We, support, we appreciate your support and we support you. Say hi if you see me. Life is good.